If you want to understand the builder pattern in Java, the problems that it solves and how to use it, you're in the right place. Watch to the end where we take the pattern to its logical limits and I'll show you a builder like nothing you've seen before. This is the problem that the builder pattern solves. We've created lots of constructors to allow users to create people with various combinations of parameters. It's a mess. It's easy to confuse the constructors and it's not a pleasant experience to try and create a person with a combination of fields that the author of the class didn't provide a constructor for. And this is just with five fields. Wouldn't it be nice if we could create a person like this? We don't need millions of constructors, we can skip optional fields, things have names so we can't confuse them, and later we can add more fields without having to revise the constructors. So how do we do it? Well the first thing you might try is a Java bean, which is a simple class with getters and setters. So now we can create a person in stages and just set the fields that we want. But it's not very nice, and I'll show you why. The person is in an invalid state until all the fields are set. There's no way to enforce required fields, and there's no way to make fields immutable, which is a big problem if we want to use person in a set or a map. So let's make it better. Here's how. Create a static inner class builder with the same fields as person. Create a method for every field within the builder class that sets the values. And create a build method that bakes all of these into a person. So now we can create a person in stages like this. It has all the advantages of the Java bean pattern without the downsides. But there's still a problem. We can create people without all required fields. Real quick, if you're learning something, consider subscribing. I regularly make videos about Java and subscribing ensures that you won't miss them. So here's one solution to our problem. Within the build method, validate all required fields and throw an exception if they're missing. Now you can't create a person without a first name. This is a step in the right direction, but there are two more elegant solutions that I'll demonstrate in the rest of this video. Here's the first, add the required fields to the builder's constructor. That way we don't need to validate them in the build method. It's now impossible to build a person without a name and we won't be surprised by runtime exceptions. Level two and three are the most common that you'll see in the world, but you're here to really understand builders. So let's talk about the problems with level three. Level three doesn't scale well with lots of required fields. We eventually end up in the same situation that we had with the constructors in the beginning. First name and last name lost their method names, so there's potential to mix them up. And it doesn't handle different combinations of required fields well. For example, either a first name and a last name, or an email. And let's be honest, it just doesn't look as pretty anymore. It's great that we can enforce required fields without runtime exceptions, but wouldn't it be nice if we could do that with the same syntax as level two? I'm gonna induct you into the builder dark arts. But be warned, most people won't have seen this before, so you might have some explaining to do if you use it. The secret is interface chaining. We create a chain of interfaces which guide the user through the builder in a specific order. We make the builder private and implement all of our interfaces. It's still just one builder object, but users have to interact with it through our chain of interfaces. We start with first name setter, which requires the user to provide a first name before moving on to last name setter, which requires the user to provide a last name before moving on to optional field setter where they can configure the other fields. The syntax is exactly the same as before, but the compiler will only allow you to call the methods in a specific order. You must call first name, then last name, before you can configure the optional fields and call build. There was one other thing that level 3 didn't handle well, supporting different combinations of required fields. We want the user to have to provide either a first name and a last name, or an email. We can do this with the dark arts. These interfaces do exactly that. I've covered that quickly and some of the concepts at the end are advanced, but all the source code for this tutorial is on GitHub and I encourage you to download it and have a play. If you like the video, like the video. It helps get this content in front of more people. And do subscribe if you want to see more.